Hello, my name is Petrina Sharp and I'm your host for today's segment of Our Ventura. Today, as our guest expert, I have Dr. Gail Morassi and she's going to talk to us about holistic animal health. Welcome, Gail. I'm happy to be here, Petrina. I'm glad. So tell me, how is animal holistic health different from veterinary health? So animal holistic health will incorporate somewhere between veterinary science and holistic health. So I work with advocates who want to use methods that are not drugging and not cutting to help your animal get well, such as chiropractic. Yes. And acupuncture and okay. nutrition. There's all kinds of great methods out there for us. So tell me a little bit more about what veterinary orthopedic manipulation is. Yeah, I'm excited to talk about that. Big mouthful, <laughs> veterinary orthopedic manipulation. It's a fancy way of saying that with animals, veterinary, you're using some kind of orthopedics so of joint and actually spine, and you're, you're using like a, a manipulation. Very similar to some human chiropractic methods where you use different little machines like these, handheld devices that help you make the change in the body of the animal. Okay, so um, why would you want to do that on an animal? <laughs> I mean, I, I'm an advocate, but tell me for our audience why you would want to do that. Well, I think that a little demonstration would be great at this point. Okay. And I could show you why we would do it. All right. So we have <laughs> Lucy. Yes, she is. She our was sneaking in here. <laughs> Lucy has actually been a patient, and the reason why Lucy gets care is because sometimes she has problems with her joints, right? So we've got problems in these hip joints with her, and so we want to actually be able to move them to keep her mobile, and we also want to look for misalignments, and we use a fancy word called, word called subluxation, which right. means that things are really, really stuck. When we mess with Lucy's body, sometimes, <laughs> I think she's nervous on camera she's a little, a little bit. Look at her slipping. <laughs> <laughs> when we go like this on a dog's body or we press on the spines, we look for them to wince mm -hmm. or we look for problems where it actually twitches. And we have a word called fasciculation where things twitch. So earlier I was checking Lucy and I got these little twitches all over. If she gets really scared, many times we don't see it right away, mm, but so she's got a few of those areas. So many of us will see our dogs starting to limp or go la lame, but also people will bring their animals in for chiropractic even when they have digestive issues or they're having problems with coughing or they've got other things that aren't necessarily a joint problem because chiropractic relieves a misalignment. So let's just say we had little dimmer switches on each vertebrae. Mm -hmm. If you had a dimmer switch on low, not much energy is getting out that nerve out to wherever it goes. So these nerves on Lucy go to her hips, but these nerves on Lucy go to the stomach. Mm -hmm. So a dimmer switch would be like turning down the power. Right. So when we use the little tool, this is called an impulse, and Lucy's had this done before where it clicks, and it moves and gets the pressure off the nerve, which helps clear out the inflammation, which is pressure on a nerve. And what happens to that nerve? It's like the dimmer switch got turned to bright. Right. Much like these lights right here. <laughs> <laughs> so we actually go along the spine easily on each vertebrae and move them okay. and get so the okay. pressure off. Now, she's wincing because some of these are sore. Mm -hmm. And basically what this feels like is almost getting flicked. So it's not a lot of pressure, but they feel it and they know. And when I go through the second it's time, okay, you baby. see that she's not wincing because it's already clearing. And this is what we do when we go through. Now, she's got some sore ones here as she oh, has in the past. Yeah. And Lucy gets well, many misalignments here that screw up digestion. Does she have some digestive yeah, issues? Yeah, I think so. She does. Yeah, it, it seems like her even though I keep her on a very restricted diet, she, her, her tummy tends to look like she's eaten 
you know, five pounds of food. <laughs> she gets very bloated, as I remember in the past. And also with her, sometimes we'll get a little bit of her stomach pulling up. Sometimes we'll call that a hiatal hernia or a little bit of out pouching up. And we release that on her. And I can always tell with Lucy when it releases because she just relaxes. And she gets very, very, like, yeah. melty. <laughs> That's good for her. So when we're doing the veterinary treatments like this, we're always looking for a change as we go through. For instance, we'll see yawning, and that means we're getting near the end. We'll see their body sort of go like a noodle, which tells us we're getting near the end. And we'll see less reflexing and a more relaxed body. We'll usually do a group of about five to six visits just to see how oh, okay. the animal's doing first. Right now her eyes are starting to close a little bit because I'm releasing her diaphragm. A little bit, yes. She's getting, <laughs> she'd like to get back in your lap. I However, know, she does she? like, well, that's her favorite place to be is in my lap. <laughs> so we would also work with other advocates such as I might refer her to help you get some acupuncture or she might need physical therapy. Um, I work with some vets here in Ventura at Ohana Pet Hospital, and they're very helpful because they also support the holistic care. Mm -hmm. We are all trying to do what we can before we have to resort to actually having to give a drug or give some kind of surgery. And that's the goal for sure. Other modalities that we might use. Yes. Cold laser, that's a really good one. So what is that exactly? So cold laser is a ray of red light that goes through and it will actually impart changes on the metabolism of the cell, which means that you can increase healing, decrease inflammation, and you can help with all kinds of things, even open wounds after surgery. You can help with sinusitis, uh, help with eye infections, gum diseases, many things like that just heal up quickly on an animal because you can use that healing light. It's really fabulous. Wow, and are there, are there um, some sort, do you, it's not just dogs, right? You do cats and, and other animals too? What? I've mostly just cats and dogs. Mm -hmm. However, I do a lot of equine more in the last few years. I've been doing this for 20 years and I would say dogs are mostly. Mm -hmm. I see humans also. <laughs> so if I see 50 patients in a week, about <laughs> half is animal and half is human. Yeah. And some of my most favorite patients are animals, I hate to say. Yes, well, they're cute. <laughs> <laughs> they keep us all in line. <laughs> they do, for sure. Uh, but I've seen some really, really miraculous changes that you don't necessarily see with humans. Like, you might have a dog come in and can barely walk, and you do one treatment, and they run out. And you don't see that so much with the humans. Just, wow. There's no placebo. Yeah right the animal gets right. well or they don't and that's right. what's so exciting about this kind of care <sighs> yeah really I've, nice. I've actually I have a um, first-hand example of that um, I don't know it had to be 20 years ago um, I was married to a chiropractor at the time and he had a patient who had a cat that had gotten run over and was dragging its hind quarters and after two adjustments, the cat walked out and was fine. Oh, yeah. So yeah. otherwise, that cat might have been paralyzed for life. So it was really, and that kind of sold me on, wow, I didn't, I didn't realize that you can do this on animals, too. Oh. So that was really, that was, that was what did it for me. <laughs> it makes you a believer. Yeah. I think one of the first cats I adjusted was a five-month-old cat and it had never walked in its life. Uh, was the last born of a litter, mm -hmm. dragging its back legs and its tail. They brought this kitty in, and I did a treatment where I clicked up the spine just like we just did with Lucy, and we went up the spine. And at the end of the last click, which was near the neck, the tail popped up, wow. and the cat stood up and started walking, and everyone was crying. <laughs> and that's been going on now. I see that. That's like common, just common to see those kinds of little miracles. And it just makes you go, yay. <laughs> so are th 
Yes, that is so cool. It is. It's, yeah. I mean, I, I love that story. Um, are there some breeds that are that it, that chiropractic would be more common for than other breeds? I think my most dedicated owners, <laughs> clients, are the ones that bring in the dogs that are doing agility. Uh -huh. They see more because the dogs are athletes. Mm -hmm. They see their times get cut down by seconds, or they see that they ha can run six runs instead of two runs. And so, people who have dogs that do higher activity really see the difference. But they're also giving them nutritional, you know, all kinds of remedies and acupuncture and physical sure. therapy. And their dogs are their the stars, sure. and they're they're really into it. And so that's that's exciting. Um, a quick story, I was at an agility event and a dog had already, it was a Pomeranian. This dog was already run down. It had done six runs, you know, the slalom and sure. through the tunnels and up and yeah, down. Yeah. And the owner came over to me in a booth at the event and said, can you just do an adjustment on my dog? Because she's, I don't know, she's just tired out. So he did an adjustment and that dog pepped up so much that she decided to do one more run and she videotaped that run. She was faster in that run than she'd been in the first one in the earlier part of the day. Wow. So you see like, oh my gosh, this just turns them around, right? That was without anything but just an adjustment. Here's the thing I'd like to say though, and I say this to my human patients too, <laughs> don't wait until you're really hurting or you see your dog really hurting to get care because there's prevention. This is such a big part of what I do. If I catch a dog in the first five years of their life, mm -hmm. the studies now are showing that you can prevent hip dysplasias and other problems later on in life. Same as the humans. It's like, why not keep yourself tuned up? Sure. Right? And why not <laughs> do <sense>. some prevention? <laughs> and I just really wanted to remind everyone about that for sure. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you. Is there an age that's better or not better? But you said the, the kitty was five months old, so young is good too. <laughs> is great, yeah. yeah. And when they're older, we tend to just keep them comfortable mm -hmm. instead of being able to fix them. And that's okay too. But, you know, I don't want a large deceased file. Right. <laughs> I want all the new ones, right? right. Because that's really great yeah. for, for to see the life get back into them and just turn around. Yeah. Great, so we're running out of time. Is there anything that you would like to add or summate or say about holistic health? I think some real basic things to remind people are, number one, feed your dog really high quality food. It's that important. You know, just because they're your dog or your cat doesn't mean they should get less. We also use a lot of superfoods with animals now. We, we tend to forget that they need some life in their food, not just dead overcooked so superfoods that have some greens and some barley grasses in them. Probiotics for gut bacteria, digestive enzymes, that's a core for most people with their animals. And the second thing is that watch out for things that they're allergic to, and I don't just mean their food, but in the environment. We have a very toxic environment. Mm -hmm. So I always say watch the food, watch the environment, and those are two things anybody can do right away. On that, I have one more thing. Um, my daughter's dog seems to be allergic to fleas. Mm. What can you do about that? I think most animals are allergic to fleas. I think that that insect has really sort of mutated and they're really hard to kill. I try to get people to use natural remedies and we've got great ones we've tried for powdering the house with mm. things that are not toxic, such mm -hmm. as diatomaceous earth. Mm -hmm. which, by the way, are little tiny, like, planktons from the, from the earth level in the ocean. Pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. And then when they do get the fleas, we have some really natural things we'll recommend, as, such as essential oils to help on the body. But the immune system of the animal, to begin with, mm -hmm. if it's strong, doesn't attract the bite of the flea. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. That makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Okay, if someone would like to get a hold of you, how can they best do that for more oh. information on all of this? So, of course, we're in Ventura, mm -hmm. so we have a number, which is 805-901-9394. And we have a website, which mm -hmm. is www.animalholistic.com.
www.gaylesmith.net. Excellent. Well, thank you, Gail. We are out of time, and I really appreciate you coming in and talking to us today. And oh, I'm, thank I know you Lucy, too, Lucy. I know she appreciated it too. <laughs> she's all <laughs> now. Yeah, she's pretty relaxed down here. <laughs> okay, thank you very much for watching. Um, this is I've been your host, Petrina Sharp, for this segment of Our Ventura TV, and see you next time.